for um, my other presenter. She did an awesome job. The Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And sometimes you would just take that from a spiritual concept of understanding God's word. But there are other um, pieces and components um, to ministry that we need to be familiar with in order for the church to be able to do what we are mandated to do. So we thank God for you. Give God a praise just for yourself. By the help of God, tonight um, I'm just going to try to pull um, uh, a few um, points. I um, want to touch on just uh, the spirit of the servant and um, tie in to um, uh, the five few attributes of a son and a daughter. They correlate together um, as pertaining to ministry and the time in which we're living in. You know, just um, it's such a time of um, self-absorbance and independence, and that therefore it, it is. Um, critical that we begin to realize that in order for us to become what we desire to become, it takes connections and relationships and we must be willing to give up ourselves as the Bible says uh, and for man will be faithful in another man's vineyard so therefore that there amen is very important amen, just want to grab one scripture Amen. From um, I'm going to be pulling it from uh, some uh, notes in a, the the infant stage of a book that I'm putting together. Um, the call and the spirit of the armor bearer, and um, the, the spoil of sonship. Something else that I have been writing. So 1 Samuel 14, 6 and 7 says, And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over unto garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. And his armor bearer said unto him, do all that is in thine heart. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Our bear servant, you know, it kind of correlates to the same role. And therefore, when we begin to understand the function of an armor bear, the function of a servant, you will find that that is not so much as a great spiritual position as it is as the apostles, the prophet, the evangelist, you know, and all the things that um, the elder, the deacon, but what we must understand, it still is a role that is chosen in order for us to fulfill. And all of it is assigned to a servant, it's assigned to the one that um, they are there to serve. When we begin to understand that, amen, that uh, it's like a mentor and mentee relationship. When God assigns you to a place or to someone, it doesn't matter your gifting, your calling. When God sends you someplace and He sent you there because it is something inside the one that He sent you to that you need. And in order for us to become what we desire to become or what God desires for us to become, Therefore, it must be a spirit of humility, a spirit of submission. And that doesn't make us, amen, weak. It is in our humbleness that begins to, um, begins to um, magnify our strengths. The greatest thing that we can do, no matter how gifted we are, no matter how talented we are, is therefore to be able to submit those gifts and those talents in order to be used Amen. By the one that we're assigned to, I say this um, clearly and like and, and if if J T D Jakes himself, as great as he is, was to come and to say he sent him, God sent him to New Beginnings or he sent him to Faith Power Deliverance Center. Therefore, if he sent you there, 
He sent you not to love the church. He sent you here to submit your gift to where he sent you. Because if God assigned you someplace, he assigned you there to serve. So therefore, when we begin to understand that, therefore we can see the difference between the, the heart of a servant and those that are there. Are they self-serving or did we really come to serve? You know, when we begin to understand ministry, in, in the ministry in the time in which we're living in, like I said, it is um, very amen, fast paced and therefore what people are desiring to do, now they're trying to fulfill amen, their personal assignments, but they will try to fulfill them in the place at the expense of somebody else. But when you begin to understand that I'm here to serve, so you can tell who is there to serve, because the one, the greatest ones that will serve, you will see them in the, with their heart, in a sense, with a towel. Amen. It doesn't matter what my what my gift and talent is, whatever I whatever I can fit in to do that's going to help push the vision into the direction that God has said to go into. Therefore, I would sit long enough to even grab the heart of my leader. See, because sometimes you gotta understand it will gather all different types of servants. But therefore, you can be a great servant and you would serve at a great capacity for a specific cause because you agree with the cause. But then when the cause is over, therefore my servitude stops. But when I have the heart of my leader, therefore it's not just that one cause, it's whatever is inside of his heart that I'm serving to that capacity to see that this is fulfilled. So therefore a true servant will therefore begin to put his own dreams or own agenda and own things aside and line up with the visionary of the house and therefore serve so whatever it is and whatever it takes therefore I'm committed to see what God has placed in you to come to pass Does that make sense? So therefore you can understand that's when you begin to develop and you can tell, develop uh, true servants and you can even develop a team a team of servants, or so sometimes you can see it, the difference between those that are there, their heart is committed, and those that are there for the cause. So the ministry, true ministry team of servants, heart will be there, and the other ones will just be an entourage. I'm here just because, you know, where you're going, and I feel that where you're going is going to help me get to where I need to get to. I'm not really serving to help push you, but I'm going to do just enough to go along for the ride. It doesn't make sense to you. Amen. So therefore, when you begin to understand there are attributes of a true, amen, servant, he will be spirit-filled. Amen. He will be a man of prayer. She will be a man of prayer, a woman of prayer. They will be a student of the word. They will see God's face, not just for what God has for them, but to fulfill the assignment that he has for you. Let me just um, back, back, you know, back up a little bit. Like he was talking about my pastor, Bishop Brooks, and, and, and I understood the call that was on my life, the things that was prophesied to me, things that I prayed about. But my, when, I, when God sent me to the church there, when I was there, I was already preaching. I was already doing evangelism. I was a volunteer chaplain at a drug program in Middletown. The whole service is twice a month. But when I came there and, and God assigned me there, and I sat down and talked with Bishop, and people, and I didn't do people were calling me to preach, but I never took one engagement without asking my pastor could I go. And for the first now, mind you now, I'm already preaching, I'm traveling, I'm doing revivals, and every time I would go to him and somebody would call me to come, he said, no son, I don't want you to go, I just need you in the house. Now mind you now, mind you now, the first few times I was like, no, you <laughs> you know, because the fact was, now I'm here, but I ain't doing nothing. You ain't, I'm not doing nothing here, but in the, not understanding that God was teaching me to submit my gift. To submit my gift. He said, if you can't humble yourself and lift your gift and submit it unto him, 
So therefore, it was other gifts that was in me that was needed other than the preaching that was in the house because it was already one voice in the house. So therefore, anything I had to learn the voice of my pastor, so therefore, whatever he spoke, then if the Lord would grant me a chance to speak, I can echo. It wasn't, see, therefore, sometimes you can allow your gift to get in the way and be a competing voice instead of an echo. Because you haven't yet submitted yourself as a servant, but therefore you're trying to be, trying to, like he said, you want to fulfill your own assignment. But it's a time now where even as pastors that we must be prayerful to even begin to be able to distinguish the entourage, the servants, the types of sons and daughters that they are. Amen. When you with me, we begin to understand that the, 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 the true servant will have a fear and a reverence for the Lord. Amen. He will be full of faith. He will be she will be submissive. Therefore, she would have integrity and she would have integrity. Therefore, and be accountable. And not just accountable, but be reliable. When I need, when I need you, I can reach for you and you can be found. Uh -huh. You can be responsible, capable of handling tasks as if I was handling it myself because you've taken the time to serve me to understand my spirit. Yes. So therefore, amen, your attitude will be the right attitude and you will be attentive to the needs that is in the house. And anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, amen. But therefore, when you see that, amen, the role that I have now, I'm just here to serve, I'm here to protect, I'm here to refresh, I'm here to support, I'm here to encourage, and I'm here to engage in battle with my spiritual leader. Amen. Not battle my spiritual leader, but I'm here to battle with my spiritual leader. Amen. When we begin to understand this, and this is a, a, a process that we all must go through, and therefore, if we're going to be able to serve in the kingdom, amen, where God has planned us, and not just serve, but be effective. Yes. Be effective. So our hearts have to be in the right place. Amen? Hearts have to be in the right place. We begin to understand this, amen. Even in Numbers 11 and 16, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee and will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone, dedicated to seeing the vision, mission of the leader fulfilled. That's when you know you got servants transitioning into sons and daughters. Ah, you see, it, 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 and I... It, it, with my children, uh, I had two beautiful children. Daughter, she's 25, and she's a little, she's successful now in, in her eyes. You know, she's she's graduated uh, college uh, with my money, and um, she's doing her thing now. She is making even thirty-eight dollars an hour. So, and in this hour, it is um, giving her her space to transition to understand that. You really not successful yet because you ain't paying your own bills at your own house. You just living it up, but you still in my house. <laughs> so, but you got to give them that time to transition, right? So, therefore, but it, it's it's a certain time when you have uh, children, even natural and spiritually, that therefore when they with, they can't fully adapt and understand the process of still being connected. It is almost, I have a system that I said, eventually, I'm going to keep loving and doing this all the time, but eventually, when it comes to the house, you age out. Mm. Huh? See, you, you age out. Now that means when you age out, that means the benefits run out. <laughs> 
sure. Enough has been invested to that point that you still you'll be able to with you be able to transition and on your own, then you'll be able to what be able to draw from all the wisdom that you were sitting under that you think you don't need now. Um, that you think you don't need now, then that's when you realize that daddy and mommy was right. Uh, he said, well here, he said that he, he told Moses he will give them his spirit. Amen. They will willing, be willing to sacrifice their own self-ambition to help complete the vision of the leader. You see, and that's like when I was at uh, serving my pastor and I wasn't preaching, you know, and, uh, and, and, and I wasn't doing anything. But the Lord allowed me to take that time to serve him and begin to understand his spirit and begin to put my family in a position that therefore that I can be faithful in the vineyard and then the other gift that I had within me, the gift of giving, the gift of prayer, to begin to pray for my leader and things when, 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 when be in prayer and when God can trust you in prayer and he will speak to you in prayer say, well, I need you to give Bishop a thousand dollars. I need you to give Bishop two thousand dollars. And not knowing what, you know, you look at it, well, he don't need it. I need it more than he need it. But when God can trust you in those areas, Areas. And therefore, when something was needed to be fixed at his house, you got a construction company. So into that. Don't ask for nothing. Just go do it. When something at the church was needed to be built or fixed, don't send an invoice. Just do what needs to be done. Because you begin to sacrifice your own ambitions just to be a blessing to the man of God. Because anything that's going to pull stress off of him, that I'll be able to help him to flow, that therefore I'm fulfilling my assignment. So therefore, he begin to build character in you to the point that it's just not about your gift, because sometimes your gift will carry you where your character can't keep you. So therefore, when you develop character, it will magnify your gift because therefore, when your gift creates a platform, you'll be able to stand where God has placed you to stand because you took the time to build character, serving your leader and watching him do the things that you was able to do that you didn't be able to do on the inside that you haven't developed. So therefore, it was something in him that needed to be poured in me the things that will be developed behind the scenes. Amen. But everybody wants the platform. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Everybody wants the platform. Does this help us tonight? Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to be short, though. We're going to be short, though. We're going to be short, though. Amen. Luke 9 and 55 says, in the, another version said, You do not know what kind of spirit you are, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. You may have zeal for the same causes as your leader, you know, as far as helping the homeless, you know, single mothers and orphans and things, but when, but it is when you have the same spirit that your attitude and your intentions and your motives become pure and as your leader that you can successfully and effectively assess, uh, uh, assist your leader. So that's when you have the same spirit as your leader. You can serve in a capacity where it won't hurt your leader, but it will help your leader. That's in every aspect. That's whatever, if it's the usher board, if it's the choir, if it's the musicians, whatever it is in the capacity of the church that we come, we become gifted, but we must become submitted. Because what we must understand, sometime, amen, you will have those that will come, but they want to use your platform to highlight. They didn't pray to get the platform there. They didn't fast to get the platform there. They didn't give to get the platform there. But it, therefore, you see it, it's an opportunist, not a servant. That's right. That's right. That's true. But when you're a servant, you begin to understand that I'm here to serve. Amen. How many understand servanthood is a gift? It's a gift. It's a gift. And I'm going to tell you from experience, it's a gift that is rewarded by God. That is rewarded by God. By humbly submitting myself and serving in areas and capacities 
that therefore that a, a person that the things that I was doing would felt like they were above. But by me submitting myself in those areas, it allowed me to tap into the wisdom of God and into the pocket of God, if you will. Amen. And not see lack of things that I would have been lacking if I had rolled out my gift the way that I wanted to write it out, but allow me God to really teach me how to be humble and how to serve. So therefore we begin to understand that. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew 10 and 4, he said, He that perceives, he that receives you receives me. And he that receives me receives him that sent me. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Amen? No wise lose his reward. So therefore, it is very important and critical in the hour that we in, amen, to understand, amen, the heart of a servant, what it is to serve, amen, to walk in humility, to just lock in, amen, and be committed, amen, to the things of the kingdom, and therefore understanding that I don't have to push my agenda, but if I push my leader's vision, whatever God has for me is going to be for me, and therefore, if he assigned me there, I no longer, amen, want to understand what I want to do. I just want to serve in, in whatever capacity that I can serve in, that my heart will be in the right place. And if God placed my hands on the plow to serve my leader, the best thing might can happen that the rapture take place while I'm serving. And therefore, I shall be able to receive my reward. Amen. Amen. Because if your heart is in the right place while you're serving and God wants to come back, that will be a blessed thing to do because I have fulfilled my assignment that I can truly hear and say, well done. Amen. 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 I just want to just pull out, amen, tell you I'm going to be brief, amen. Five, amen, distinction and signs, amen, of spiritual sons and daughters. Amen. Because therefore we begin to understand servants is one thing, but therefore sons and daughters is another thing. And one thing I, the church knows, amen, I tell you, there's a great difference between membership and a covering. Huh? Hmm? Between membership and a covering. When God allows you to be planted somewhere and he has placed you in a place, he said he will give you pastors after his own heart. Therefore, therefore, that will teach you and feed you the word of God. Therefore, you're not just joining as a member. You now have a covering. But here's the thing is that some, amen, make the distinction and that um, really don't understand the full capacity of the covering of a spiritual father and a spiritual mother. Therefore, those that don't want to truly live saved, they will try to make the relationship carnal and say, you know, you remind me of my father. I ain't you the father I didn't have, but they won't submit spiritually. Wow. You know, oh, be the father that I or or let me talk to you as a man. No, we men talking, but therefore I'm a godly man, and therefore God sent you here. You cannot put, let those try to pull you to a place that you're on the same level. Amen. That's good. That's good. When you got that's like my kid, my son saying, you know, Dad, I want to talk to you, you know, like my boy. No, your boy ain't birth you. Your boy ain't make you. And your boy ain't provide for you for 20 years. So therefore, you can't talk to me like I'm one of your boys. Therefore, there is a level of authority that goes, amen, to the place of being a spiritual father. And there is a level of authority also that goes with the place of being a spiritual son and a daughter. And here it is that we help us out. The authority that goes to the place of the spiritual father and mother. Therefore, when we're fulfilling our roles in that aspect, 
God has given us, amen, the voice, amen, the authority to speak the things of God pertaining to his word and to your life that's going to give you direction how to get to the place and to fulfill the promise and the things that he has spoken for your life. Now, the level of authority as a child is this, as a spiritual son and daughter, is this, I have the authority of God to submit myself to my leader. And therefore, when I submit it to my leader, the very words that he has spoken that's activated inside my life, he gives me authority over the things that would keep me bound when he's speaking deliverance over my life, when he's speaking blessings over my life. As I'm submitted, the authority that I have is not even the level of my leader, but now I have authority over the things that had me bound before I I connected to my leader. I can't get no help. Hallelujah. Amen. So therefore, we begin to understand that this is why healing, amen, is not taking place inside of the body of Christ because, amen, sons and daughters, amen, they are coming up against, amen, spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. You can never deal with leadership from the bottom up. Wow. God don't deal with it like that. That's not his order. He deals with leadership from the top down. So therefore, we, no matter what, amen, we find ourselves in, you will never be able to correct your leader. That's God's job. Huh? Never be able to correct your leader. That's God's job. Amen. The Bible says in Malachi 4 and 10, it said, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. It is, amen, very critical the time in which we're living in that spiritual fathers, amen, are in place because we have to fulfill this prophecy. We have to fulfill this prophecy. Amen. So, amen, it is the rise, amen, the rise of sons and daughters and sometimes we look, amen, to spiritual fathers but we do not take the responsibility to live as sons and daughters. Huh? We look to spiritual fathers and mothers. We'll claim them, but we won't live like spiritual sons and daughters. So therefore, that makes it even hard, amen, therefore for the body of Christ to function hard, amen, for the word of God to come alive, amen, hard, amen, for the healing to take place in the lives of those, amen, that the word is being spoken to. And here's the thing, amen, when you, when God places you in a place and therefore you're under leadership, it doesn't matter the age. There must still be a level of submission because, amen, that is the governing authority that God has placed, amen, with the prophet of the house to be able to speak Amen to the sons and daughters. Amen. We begin to see the first thing, amen, you'll know, the first distinction that you'll begin to understand, amen, about a spiritual son and a daughter. You will know them by their pursuit. Wow. You'll know them by their pursuit. You'll know them by their pursuit. Whether they pursue after the things you're pursuing after, or they're pursuing after their own thing. Amen. Under your authority. Because sometimes they just want, amen, some just want you to speak and use the authority to break their chains that they can do what they want to do. That's good, sir. And this sets, amen, people apart from the rest. The pursuit of a son and a daughter, it has set them apart from the rest that are following you. Uh, true sons have a hunger and a passion. Amen. And they don't just have a hunger and a passion. They act on it. Huh? Some have vain words, but they don't pursue after you. Amen. And one thing I have learned, and I'm still learning, amen, and they, you can teach skills, amen, you can give tools, amen, pertaining to the kingdom, but you can't teach passion. You can't teach passion. You can't teach somebody to be passionate about something that's in you. Amen. You can't teach them how to pursue 
after what God has given you, it has to be in them. Yeah. Amen? So therefore, you'll know them, the difference by their pursuit. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 This helps us in mind. Amen. Amen. Real sons and daughters, they reveal themselves because they seek out fathers to learn from. Huh? And they are willing to do whatever it takes to get what they need. Amen. The pursuit tells you if somebody is real or not. Huh? Huh? If they are not pursuing, then it becomes a waste of time for true spiritual fathers to invest in them. You hear that? Invest in them. Invest. Investments are meant to bring a return. Huh? Are meant to bring a return. Huh? You don't invest in something if it's not going to benefit you. Huh? All right. Amen. Number two, you will know them by their heart to serve. True sons and daughters, you'll know them by their heart to serve. The true son, the true daughter has no agenda. No agenda. But the main thing they want to do is add value. Add value. Amen. They don't need, amen, to push your resume or even flaunt their titles. Nah. But my heart is in the right place. You don't need to, you don't need to, to, to say my title. Amen. And, 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 you know, let the work speak for itself. Huh? Let the work speak for itself. Amen. Sons don't, sons and daughters, they don't get involved in comparisons or competition. Uh, I don't compete with the team. Uh, because if, if I'm spending energy competing with the team, we're trying to be the coach, the team is losing. Uh, uh, amen. The team is losing. See, the, 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 the most um, hard part is for the development of the sons to understand and come into the identity like I had to come into when I was serving my pastor. Amen. Most sons have to go through a season, daughters have to go through a season to learn to serve in a very humble way. So sometime in the process of you serving, God has to break you. Nah, has to break your spirit that you might receive the spirit of your leader. Yes, sir. Because you can't do here what you've been doing all the time because you have to take time to sit and understand the climate in the house and understand the heartbeat of your leader before you run and try to do something because you'll do it in your own spirit. Right. That's good. Amen. Amen. Do it in your own spirit. Amen. So therefore, it is when there's time that we won't submit ourselves and be humble, God allow us to even while we're in the camp to have to deal with the time of wilderness. You know, in the wilderness is a time when, you know, you're going through the motions, but you really ain't getting nowhere. Huh? And you said that you begin to understand what the wilderness was intended was to change the mindset of those that was in bondage. And they couldn't inherit, couldn't get into the promise. Some had to die off. But the promise was still available. But until they receive the heart of God, what God wanted for them, he had to allow that generation to die off because they would have squandered the promised land. So therefore, it's a time where until your heart is in the right place, God will allow you to be in the wilderness where your heart is being tried and their process is being formed through a humble service. Amen? And those seasons of service are designed to build their heart for the long haul. Not instant gratification for the long haul. Number three, you would know, amen, as you watch them and how they are able to handle authority. Mm -hmm. 
how they are able to handle authority. And the authority that they are given, it is really not even their authority. But if they try to handle it as if it's theirs, that you can understand that's not the heart of a son yes. or a daughter. Amen. How a person responds to authority is one of the greatest marks of how far they will go in ministry, in life, in whatever they put their hands to do. Amen. Submission and honor to authority identifies whether or not a person, a son or a daughter, will live as slaves or as sons. Wow. Let me help us out. Let me help us out. See, because the, the son will work not as a slave, but as a son and receive an inheritance. Yes. Huh? But when you don't submit, amen, and honor to authority, you can begin to still work, but it's as a slave because you never step into the place of being free. So what am I doing? I'll spend years of serving from house to house, church to church, and I'll never step into the freedom of even being able to get my own because I've never submitted myself. So I'm wandering in the wilderness as the slaves in the Egyptian mindset. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, and what we must understand, authority is God's environment to break rebellion. Huh? See, authority is God's environment to break rebellion. You know, like you say, sit down, and the kids sit down, but then it's hard to I'm still standing up. <laughs> huh? But they 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 sit out because really they scared, so they sit under their breath and still stand. <laughs> huh? You know, I know as a kid, some of you got the beatings and you just get after the beating, what beat you? <laughs> huh? <laughs> but you were scared to say it to their face. <laughs> You know, God breaks rebellion and pride and stubbornness out of our lives. When we respond correctly to authority, we get greater room for promotion, blessings, and overall growth. Amen? When we, let me say that again, when we respond correctly to authority, amen, we give greater room for promotion, for the blessings in overall growth. Amen? Yes. Overall growth. When I grow, that means I can handle, I'm maturing, so therefore he can trust me with more. Amen? Amen. There's a great amount of giftings and talents inside the body of Christ and people inside the kingdom, but they can get under someone's authority they can lead but also submit to someone else easily when a situation arises. what we must understand too many are so self-consumed with their own mission what they want to do they want to lead but they have no desire to come under another Amen. That's why Amen said my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Therefore, if we don't take time to submit to somebody who has already blazed the trail, already went through, Amen, the pitfalls and survived it. Huh? That's why children don't raise the parents. Amen. That's why children don't raise the parents. Because the parents have already went through what it takes to become an adult, to become a parent. Spiritual fathers have already went through, spiritual mothers have already went through 
what it takes, amen, to build the ministry. So therefore, if we submit ourselves and be true sons and daughters, we won't have to, amen, break our neck, create a new pitfalls. We can just receive an inheritance. Amen. 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 All right, amen. Number four. Number four. I'm just about that. Amen. I'm doing with time. We good? Amen. So when you would notice them, notice how they handle correction. Yeah. Hallelujah. Correction. I say you can't be strong and wrong. <laughs> can't be strong and wrong. Uh, be wrong, you're wrong. Can't be strong and wrong. Take it like a champ. Because when you act out, it's really showing the chump. Take it like a champ. Amen. Huh? But when you act out and start running wild, you act like a champ. So take it like a champ when you're corrected. See, but what people fail to realize, correction is not discipline. It's guidance. And when you won't adhere to correction, then I got to discipline you. Huh? Like this, see, you know what? He said, God always sends warning before the storm. Correction is warning. The discipline is the storm. Huh? So therefore, if we can't stand to be corrected, therefore we can understand that they're not a true son or daughter. Huh? You correct me, I'm leaving the church. And I ain't chasing you. Huh? Because therefore, if, if I can't correct you, you know he that this is honest. He said he left the 99 sheep and went after the one. He ain't chased goats. If I can't correct you in love, I'm not disciplining you. I'm correcting you in love, guiding you so I don't have to discipline you. So you'll know them how they handle correction. Amen. One of God's ultimate tests for sonship is the area of correction. Amen. It's the area of correction. Let me get to this scripture real quick. Um, Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews 12 and 6. It says, For the Lord loveth, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Amen. And scourges every son whom he receiveth. Huh? Every son whom he receiveth. If I don't love you, I won't correct you. Because the correction is going to help you down the road. Amen. Amen. And I'm not talking about, amen, about correction that is shaming and humiliating. Amen. Therefore, if we understand loving correction, amen, and this is usually the biggest and the final testing that God has, amen, for sons and daughters. Amen. And it is the testing of the developing of our heart. Amen. The correction and the guidance. Amen. So what we do, we find ourselves doing something wrong. And therefore, we're pulled to be talked to about it in, in, in the spirit of love and in correction. Therefore, how we handle that is going to determine is our heart in the right place. Yet or not. Amen. 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 And this is truly must be observed. Amen. Because correction is always uncomfortable. Always uncomfortable. Always uncomfortable. Always uncomfortable. Always uncomfortable. Nobody likes to be corrected. Huh? But if I am a son, amen, I can work through it. I can grow through it. If I'm a daughter, I can grow through it. If I know that this is my spiritual father, my spiritual mother, they have my best interests at heart, amen, spiritually, naturally, and how they cover me, 
Therefore, I can grow through this correction. Because I understand this correction is not for my demise, but for my development. Amen. 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 And if I amen, grow with the humble heart, then I begin to understand, amen, sooner or later, I'll be able to soar as a son. Huh? Because as a son, I'm supposed to, if I, as a son or daughter, sit and un sit under and serve and uh, receive the spirit of my father, therefore, amen, understanding in my heart is submitted to God, therefore I understand it's not my time now, but when the time comes, I should do greater works. That's the sword part. But therefore, here's, the, here's where the true prop, the true prop of lies. Amen. You have a son like Solomon, and then you have a son like Absalom. Right. Right. Huh? And everybody wants it right now. And the danger in things is when um, people have wasted, amen, one of the greatest commodities in life, which is time. Yes. And time, amen, we feel we're running out of time. So therefore, I want to make up the time and get my spotlight while I have a chance. So I only got time to do what's beneficial for me. But how many understand God said, I will restore all that the canker worm has eaten up. He is the redeemer of time. So therefore, all I need to do is serve God in a spirit of humility because once eternity touches time, God is not restrained by what we've lost and what we've squandered. God can expedite things, amen, hallelujah, in a heartbeat if our hearts are in the right place. So therefore, I don't have to try to do anything and have a hidden agenda or anything. Therefore, all I got to do is serve God in the beauty of holiness, serve in the house and where I was planted and allow God to do it, amen, and therefore he will recover all that I have lost in time. Amen. I can tell you that from experience. I'll tell you that from experience. Because as a young man, I had these dreams and aspirations, and the Lord used to speak to me as a child. Amen. He used to give me visions and things that I would accomplish, things that I would do. And 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 I found myself when I went down the wrong path and got caught up in things allowed the enemy to sell me a bill of goods, amen, that was just so uh, an empty box of broken dreams, amen, set me up in the world to do things, amen, it was fun at times, amen, seen a lot of money at times, but at the end of the road where the enemy had tricked me to the point and I found myself at a place, amen, beyond the age that I should accomplish the things that I said I was going to accomplish and I find myself Amen. At the age of 29. And at 25, I was supposed to have done all these things. And at 29, turning 30, found myself homeless with nothing. And the devil began to speak. Amen. So loud. He said, yeah, what happened? You were supposed to do this. You were supposed to do that. My Lord. But the one thing, I lost everything, but the one thing that I gained, which was the most important thing, was my connection back with God. <laughs> and before I gave in to the voice of the enemy, while sitting in the Columbus House shelter, and he said, you're 30 years old and it ain't gonna happen. It's done, you're supposed to do that at 25. I said, well, I heard the Holy Spirit speak so clearly. I missed it by 25. But by the time I'm 35, how do the X, Y, and Z shall be accomplished? And I submitted myself and I served God with a pure heart. Amen. And before 35, he began to put things back together. Amen. He said, even at the age of 30 when he spoke, amen, got married at the age of 30. Bought a house at the age of 31, but another one at the age of 32. God is the restorer of all time. Start the business at the age of 30. And serve in every capacity 
in the church, amen. I don't care if it was clean and gave me a key to the church. I cleaned the church or whatever any pastors asked me, I need you to do this. It's already done because I've had time to pray, amen, and catch the heartbeat of my leader and see the need that he had, amen, in order to free him up. And therefore, I served in a pure place. Hallelujah. And God began to bless me because I had a desire to bless my leader. My God. Hallelujah. 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 And that's why I said time. I want to hit the last point is you will know them over time. Time is the revealer of all things. Amen. Their heart will be revealed over time. Amen. Over time. Amen. Hallelujah. This cannot be a rust relationship. Amen. It takes time to raise sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Let me help us out. Amen. How many understand? Amen. We're adopted. Amen. Amen. So therefore, anybody that understands, amen, the process of adoption, amen, therefore, many would love to adopt children, amen, in the infant stage. Because, amen, when they come through a certain age, they have developed certain habits and things that now you got to love and break through. you got to undo. Amen. So, so it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. Amen. Therefore, when you have, amen, spiritual sons and daughters that have been through so many things in churches, a different church hurt, therefore, now as spiritual fathers, amen, we cover and we must be willing to stand and love you through these processes, but therefore, your heart will be revealed over Amen. Over time. So that means, amen, even in the midst of loving, amen, covering, amen, the soul is in the natural soul and spirit, eventually we age out over time. These things must be developed. Relationships, the credibility, amen, and trust must be built over time. Amen. Must be built over time. One thing I've understood, amen, and, and I'm learning more and more, amen, as God aligns me with people, amen, and even people that's not even at my church that I'm covering, amen, I got a call from a son today, amen, in Texas, amen, every time he's dealing with something, family, whatever, he calls, but I had to learn that I had to earn the right to speak into their lives. Right, right. Amen, just because God gave me a word for somebody, I don't just release it. I have to earn the right to speak it to them, or therefore I'll just release it and they'll never get the benefit of it. Amen. 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 So therefore, over time, that trust and the relationship must be built between the Father and the sons. And therefore, as we have the heart of the leader, it takes time for them to have the heart of the son. Extend the door, especially when those that they have trusted in has either hurt them, abused them in areas, abused spiritual authority, and therefore now, amen, in these last days, we have the assignment of loving them through all of that. Amen. And amen. Season time will tell if someone is really serious about walking as a son and a daughter in the kingdom. Amen. We will observe many with great potential and we will watch many fade away with potential because they will never, amen, submit their hearts to be true sons and true daughters. Amen. 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 Time reveals the heart. Amen. But what we understand as leaders, amen, this is all a part of the journey. Amen. So therefore, we're, amen, to love, amen, and cover and raise spiritual sons and daughters. Therefore, not in partiality, every son and daughter is different. So therefore, but we have the assignment of loving them, covering them. Amen. Even knowing that some will not even return with the spirit of reciprocity. Amen. Amen. Here, 
warning. Pastor, we can't start calling some of our spiritual sons, especially when they have not voluntarily agreed to the relationship. Huh? Huh? When they haven't voluntarily agreed to the relationship, amen, we can't call them sons. In fact, amen, we can't do it, amen, because it takes a great deal of time, amen, to pass on the fruit of the relationship and it to be established, amen? amen. And this is one thing I understand, and through time, amen, I've had many that would claim me in my process, but now they're saying son. But thank God I know the voice of the Father. God bless you. Now, did you enjoy that or what? Pastor, Pastor Robert King is a